Hello everyone. Good day. In this video, we are going to see the demo on Noteport services. If you like this video, please subscribe to eSparks channel and click the bell icon for the latest updates. This is the agenda of this video. We are going to perform these steps for understanding Noteport services in this video. Noteport service. This is the architecture diagram for understanding the demo on Noteport services. Here we are going to create a deployment using a YAML manifest and on top of that we are going to create a Noteport service again with the help of YAML manifest. Once these steps are done, we are going to access the node port service using the node IP addresses and the node port. Thirty thousand is the node port number we are going to use. Just a note on the node port range, it should be within thirty thousand to thirty two thousand seven six seven. This is an optional field while defining the YAML manifest of node port service. Kubernetes will automatically assign a port within the specified range if we did not specify one in the YAML manifest file. Now let us see the demo. Step number one: Access and inspect the Kubernetes cluster. Access the Kubernetes cluster using kubectl utility and check if the Kubernetes cluster is running properly. Just to save the time, I have consolidated all the commands in a notepad, and the same is available in the video description. This is the master machine where we have connected and installed kubectl utility. kubectl cluster info command gives the details of your cluster. Now check the notes. Our cluster is running with one master and two worker nodes. Now check the parts in the cube system namespace. Yeah, you can see all the cluster components are running properly. Step number two: Create and apply a Kubernetes deployment using YAML manifest. In this step, we are going to create and apply a deployment YAML in the Kubernetes cluster. We are going to use Apache Web Server image for this deployment with two replicas. This is the command to create a deployment YAML with all the required fields. Just redirect the output of this command to a file called deployment.yaml. Once we execute this command, deployment YAML file is created. We can check the command line references from the official Kubernetes documentation. Here we can see all the kubectl command line references with the examples. Here, what we are seeing is an example and the usage of Kubernetes deployment. Coming back to the YAML file. Just remove the unwanted lines in the YAML file to make it work. Make sure we are using the correct container images and the labels. Here the container image is HTTPD which is an Apache web server and the pod label is app equals web server. The selector field should also have the same label. Hope we already know how to see the YAML skeleton of a Kubernetes objects using kubectl explain command. If not, please see the previous videos. Once the validations are done, apply the deployment file. Once it is applied, we can see the respective parts are getting created.
Step number three, create and apply NodePort service using the YAML manifest. Once the node port service is created, the node ports of the node is mapped to the service port and then the service port is mapped to the backend parts using the target port number or the parts port number. Here the node port range is 30,000 to 32,767. Just like how we created the deployment YAML, we need to create the node port YAML definition file also. Open the YAML file and remove the unwanted lines. Here, the selector field should be updated with the pod label. Then only it will ensure once we hit the service, traffic will get routed to the correct pods. Open the deployment YAML and note down the pod label, which is app equals web server. This label should be the selector field for the node port service. Now open the NodePort YAML file and modify it accordingly. We can also mention the optional field called NodePort and its value in this manifest. We can check the skeleton of it using kubectl explain command. Here we are describing the skeleton of services. So under ports, we can see the optional field for node port type. Here we can see node port is the optional field. Include the same in your YAML definition files. Here the node port that we are using is 30,000. Now apply the same into the cluster. Step number four, access the node port service using the node IP and the node port. We are going to hit the node IP addresses with the exposed node port. Once we hit, traffic will be directed to the service port number. From there, it will be redirected to the target port number, which is the part port. Just take a client machine and hit the IP addresses colon node port number. Here the exposed node port number is 30,000 as per our configurations. Here we can see we are able to access our application that is running in our pods. Well, that's it for this lecture. Thank you from vSparks and thank you for watching this video.